She's known around town by a different name, and her persona has been entertaining people for years here and around the country. Whether it's a drag bingo show, singing with a group of talented women, a one-woman show, or mentoring youth, her energy and dedication is contagious. I'm talking about Barry Ayers, also known as Beneva Fruitville. Barry, it is so good to see you. Thank you so much for having me. So, there is Barry. Yes. And there is Beneva. Mm-hmm. And Beneva is your character that you play. Correct. Yes. What's the big, biggest difference personality-wise between Barry and Beneva? Well, um, Beneva says all the things that I wish I could say. <laughs> Beneva, um, but you say those things anyway, don't you? Or do you? Or or is that the edited uh, that we see? Well, it's, when you're when you're Barry, it sounds so. Uh, it sounds so like mental health craziness, but um, it's it, it, before I transitioned, um, as you know, as a personal friend of mine, um, that I I'm a transgender woman. Um, and I transitioned um, over two years ago, uh, medically transitioned over two years ago, and began my transition three years ago. So um, before I transitioned, it was probably easier to tell the difference between Barry and Beneva. Um, but as I transitioned, um, the, the, the lines became a little bit blurred, and um, because I was living my life every day as my true self, as my most authentic self, how I felt on the inside. And um, the, what I thought um, and felt and things I said used to be a way, um, like used to come out through Beneva's mouth, like things that I couldn't say as Barry, as an educator, as a person in uh, the professional life, um, Beneva could say those things and get away with it, whereas Barry had to be professional, had to be someone in the corporate world, someone to represent an organization. Um, so as the lines have blurred a bit, and also I had a career change, I went from being in the professional world to performing full time, I, um, I took the opportunity to kind of integrate the two and so now I'm a little bit more personally verbose in my opinions and um, my stances on issues, whereas I used to be a little bit more private about those things. Could Barry return to sort of a corporate, more professional life, or is that did that go with the 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 Barry who is male? Well. That it's funny you ask that because I find myself literally in a position now in my life where I'm at a crossroads. So before moving to Sarasota, I, um, I was pursuing a career in the arts um, from the time I graduated college. Um, that was my goal in life was to, to make a living in the arts and, um, and I had been relatively successful. I had a, a really nice career um, a couple off-Broadway shows, national tours, uh, cruise ship work. Um, and even what brought me to Sarasota was a three-show union contract at one of the professional theaters here. And um, I just kept getting work here at various theaters, so I kept staying. And then I really, really loved Sarasota in that time period. Do you find it more difficult to get hired as an actor now since your transition? I don't know yet. There hasn't been enough time yet. I am still exploring a lot of those options. Um, I don't, I find a lot of people have said, yes, we would love to use a transgender actress for a production, but never any specific offers. How else do you identify yourself? Obviously, as a trans woman is, is such a huge part and has been monumental 
in, in, in your life and becoming your authentic self, as well as being an entertainer. Who else, what else are you? Oh, gosh. Um, I've always defined myself by what I was able to do. And I think we as entertainers do that. And then we kind of come home and sit in the dark and huddle from the, the masses, if you will. Um, I, in college, I began um, learning about LGBTQ issues, and they weren't even called LGBTQ issues then. It was the Gay Liberation Front at that time, <laughs> even as at my age, and um, uh, especially at my age. Um, and I began uh, working with um, groups, um, ACT UP, and in political activism, and became very involved in what I thought would be um, helpful to um, my fellow man. And so uh, activism and helping other people out really was something I was, I was very passionate about. Was that part of your coming out process at that point in college or? Um, I had a very strange coming out. I came out when I was pretty young. I came out when I was um, 16 in college, excuse me, in high school. Um, and it was, um, it, it was a tough experience. Um, but on the other hand, it was kind of easy because I had previously dated a guy in high school that everybody kind of knew about, but nobody really said anything because he was really, really super popular. And then <laughs> I became super popular when because he was super popular. Mm. And then... Popular by association. Popular by association. And then we broke up and the whole school was a Twitter. And, and that uh, was before Twitter. That was were, before and, Twitter. And they were a Twitter. They were oh, a oh Twitter. My Everyone was clutching their happen? pearls. Um, but so then when I actually fully came out, I was still remained like I, I, I never had the agita with coming out, but I had a lot of the drama. So um, like my parents threw me out when I was 16. Um, and then, you know, I left home when I was 17. And um, but I was lucky because I left home to go to college. Mm -hmm. So I life, I kind of. That's just that's that's volume. That's, that's like, another show. That's down a the whole road. different show. Um, that's a ten-part series. No. That a docudrama, pretty much. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Who would you have play you? Me. Yeah. <laughs> Who else? Can you play yourself in a in of a docudrama? Course. Absolutely. Really? Is, There's is no there one that could play me better. Is there a pre precedent for someone playing themselves in their biopic? But there should be. <laughs> All right, maybe you'll you'll break that mold. Maybe I will. Honey, you've broken plenty of molds. I have. I have. Let's. That is something I have done. I, I've broken a lot of. I molds. like to say they broke the mold before they made me. <laughs> well, and this is what you get. Um, What's the biggest misconception people have about trans people? I, I think it's very simple. I think that people think that we are dangerous, that we are, um, that, we, that people tend to <clears throat> sexualize us because they only think of transgender people in the way they've seen them, and the way they've seen them is in porn or in sexualized positions on television and in film. So it's the murderer on television. It's the, um, but it's someone that someone slept with that they murdered, mm. you know. Mm. It's the person that's tricked them into thinking that, oh, you were born a real woman, so now um, you're a murderer, so you're gonna kill me now because like, you tricked me into thinking that you were a real woman. Mm -hmm. So we're not trying to deceive anyone. We're not trying to make you think 
that we are born, most trans people I know will tell you that they are trans. I've never met a trans person in my current life who has said, who is not admitted to being trans. So this misconception of we're trying to trick you into something that you don't want to be in or some kind of sexualized position is, is just completely false. And to sexualize us immediately, to put us in this role of, of <clears throat> predator. Demonizing. Demonizing without even speaking to us mm -hmm. is, is just so unfair. I mean, it's the, the literal definition of, of prejudice. You're prejudging someone based on knowledge of what you don't know, of, of things you don't know. Mm -hmm. I get that. What's something most people don't know about you? Um, this is probably a typical question. Something we can talk about. This is a family show, so I mean, you know, we have to keep it. Although it's on the internet, so we we can, you know, we can drop an f bomb now every now and then if we want. Um, to be quite frank, um, I get lonely a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I spend a lot of time alone. It's um. It's, I don't know why. I wish it was different. Are you a shy person? Yeah, yeah. I also have very, very bad social anxiety. A lot, of, I, I, deal, I, I deal with, I, know, I hate to say that I struggle with mental health issues. I deal with mental health issues and I've been very open about that. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's, I have a laundry list of, of mental health disorders that I've been diagnosed with um, but the diagnosis, the names don't really m amount to anything. Right. <clears throat> um, right. And, you know, I take a cocktail of, of medicinal help, mm -hmm. you know, better living through chemistry every day. <laughs> that's, that's true. So I that's try, true. you know, I try to, you know, fix myself to fix the things that are I, I find that the social anxiety is um, is fascinating because you are so out there on so many levels. You are out there. Well, um, that's the whole reason why I created Beniva. Was because of social anxiety. To, to, so to, I didn't to have to be myself. I could be somebody else. Oh, I get that. So, like, I could go out and and be somebody fabulous and yeah. say all these rude and crude and, and out there things and people loved it and I didn't have to show them Barry who has been broken and and torn down and 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 left and and heartbroken. Yeah. I could be someone else. I could be fabulous and beautiful and stunning and I could own the room. Yeah. I get that. I, I'm actually a painfully shy person, and some of it comes through uh, a bit of a stammer I have sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I tend to speak slowly because my brain goes about 10 times faster than right. my mouth, and I can't keep up. So the sa social anxiety is there, and I, and I totally get that. Um, and then people go, well, wait a minute, but you're doing this for a job. And right. I go, yeah. Because I love doing this. Yeah. And sometimes we need to step out of our comfort zone, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Well, it's... Okay, so to get a little bit into my history, um, I was 13 years old when I saw the musical A Chorus Line for the first time. And it changed my life. I saw people on stage that were gay. I saw people that talked about kissing girls, girls kissing girls. I talked about people... It talked about people making a living in show business. It talked about people desperate to be liked, um, but feeling like an outsider. It changed my life. And from that point on, I wanted nothing more than to be in musical theater. Musical theater was my passion. It was my hobby. It was everything that I knew I was meant to do. So and that I, was at age 13, 13. you knew that. And I trained 
from 13 to 16. Like, took every ballet class. Like, I was in ballet class with five and six year olds. Not, I'm not kidding. I was in tap class with seven, eight years old, seven, eight year olds at 16, trying to learn and catch up on all these years of training. Um, and I trained for those three years. And I got myself into one of the most prestigious musical theater schools in the country, um, University of Cincinnati Conservatory of Music. Mm -hmm. um, and not only got myself in there, but got myself a scholarship to go there. And it was my doing, it was my work, it was my passion, it was what I wanted to do. Now, the reasoning behind all that is because I didn't have to be myself. Playing these roles, playing these characters, discovering this material, this wealth of material that's out there, that I could delve into these stories um, became my escape. And it also, it was my hobby, it was my job, it was everything. And so Beneva is just an extension of all that. Mm -hmm. Just a, my own character, my own foray into musical theater. Do you see yourself ever developing any other characters beyond Beneva? That's a very good question. And it's possible. Um, I don't think anything will be as close as Beneva is um, because Beneva is so me. There's so much of me in Beneva. I mean, yes, Beneva is very much a character. She is her own person. Um, and she, she is not me. And I, could, I, <laughs> I have enough mental clarity to understand <laughs> that there is a difference. Between yeah, I've two. seen you as Beneva. <laughs> yeah. And I know you as Barry. Do we need a moment? Do you, do you... As Barry, you are one of the funniest people I know. I mean, Beneva is obviously very funny. It's hysterical and outrageous. But maybe is this the new Barry that is, or has, has Barry always been a funny person? Well, okay, so I've always lived in my head. So my brain, like yours, runs at a thousand miles per minute. Mm -hmm. um, it was when I started trusting my brain that I discovered I was funny. So, like, when I started trusting my own humor and letting those thoughts that were going on inside my head yeah. out of my mouth, yeah. that's when I discovered I was funny. And, um, and it was when I released that on the world and the more free I let myself be with what was going on inside my head, the more funny I realized I was. And so, like, with Beneva, um, especially when I first started, it would take, I would have to get wasted. I would have to get so drunk to like perform her that like because like all those things would just I would have to be like just completely free okay. and if I smoked pot like it would be there but I can't smoke pot because I cough and it it's a thing and, <laughs> uh, so but like I had to like clear my mind and, and get rid of all my inhibitions right, right so like being being drunk it helped me get rid of all those inhibitions and I could just let my mind and my mouth go sure but um, I've, I've slowly learned how to do that sober. And um, so now she can just exist um, outside of, of having to be drunk. And um, I found, I found the, the same way with driving. I would have to get absolutely smashed <laughs> to be a good driver. Right. And, and, you know, sober, I'd just be so nervous driving that I'd go right off the road. It well, was. I'm kidding, by the way. You know, I always tell my audiences at the end of every show. If I'm glad our crew is laughing here. So anyways, I'm sorry. Sweetie. No, no, no. If you're too drunk to drive, make sure you drive somebody else's car. <laughs> so, I think we're in agreement on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and make sure to have their license and their exactly. registration. Yeah. Yeah. So what's next? Well... Um, to be quite frank, 
Um, I had. Oh, I love Frank. Oh, do you? Yeah, I love being Frank. Uh, yeah. I, I've had a bad experience with Frank. Yeah. yeah it wasn't that good. No. Yeah. Okay. Mm. We'll pass on that. Okay. Well, so don't be Frank. Okay. <laughs> I, um, I had a plan to move out of state and um, uh, far out of state. And um, it was, um, all, I was all ready to go and packing the house and gotten rid of the lease and um, the animals ready to go. And five days before we were set to move, um, that option was taken away from me. So I have been left with um, what do I do with the rest of my life? Because I was going to start over in another state. And um, I had a couple things lined up to come back to Sarasota. Um, but now I'm, I'm really wondering what to do. Um, I'm kind of interested in pursuing traveling um, as an artist again, as a musical theater performer. I also, I, one of the things that uh, I do as a skill is I'm a musical director. So um, like, you know, I, when a musical, when you have a musical, you have a musical director who like teaches the uh, on stage people what the notes are for the music. You lead the band. That's a skill that I have that I've done before several times. Um, you must work very closely with a choreographer because yes. usually where there's music, there's mm -hmm. choreography. And the director, yeah. And of course the director. So it's a real collaborative. Yeah. So um, I, I, in that role as a musical director, I work very closely with the director and choreographer and we put up the show. So it's a, it's a collaborative art form. Um, it keeps me in the musical theater realm. It's something that I really enjoy because um, I do play the piano and I sight read and um, I am exploring those options um, out of state. Um, I have something that I'm looking into that you know might work out. And then I, I'm coming, actually, that's one of the reasons why I'm coming back to Sarasota is to do something with the players um, later on at the end of this year. And then who knows? I, my life is a question mark. Well, I know we haven't seen the last of Barry Ayers or Beneva Fruitville. You haven't. Barry, thank you so much for being here, sharing your story. Would you like to come back another time, maybe when you've got more adventures to, to share? I would love to, All anytime. Right. Please, please consider that. And thank you for watching. Thank you for participating with sending emails and, and ideas for people you might know who would be a great guest on Suncoast People. We're looking for people who have an interesting story to tell, people who have climbed or are about to climb what David Brooks in his book calls the second mountain in their life. But in the meantime, send, the, send an email, if you, if you care, to info at suncoastpeople.com. And I'm Robert Tim. Thanks for watching.